Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to Ottawa Zoo and our redevelopment project. Today we have a much more unique episode as we take this nine banded armadillo habitat that looked like this and turned it into this new habitat for the skunk. Now if you really like the content that you're seeing, please feel free to leave a like or drop a comment. Let me know what you think of the series, let me know what you think of these changes. And of course, feel free to subscribe, it does help me out, but as always, there's no pressure. Now the first and easiest step of a rebuild is just to remove what you've built before. So it's bittersweet to see it all say goodbye, but at the same time, really kind of exciting because we're working on something wholly new. So this is actually a more unique episode because we've moved away from the idea of rebuilding an existing habitat to maybe repurposing a habitat for a new animal, which is something we haven't really done before. But it actually makes sense because the nine banded armadillo just really didn't fit with the theme of Ottawa Zoo and the area that we've created. Now, this is not to say that maybe our armadillos might come back later in a different section of the zoo, but it doesn't make sense to have them here. And the skunk is much more thematic towards this whole North American style area. And I think it actually looks really cool. And it's still a smaller animal, smaller habitat, which means that we don't really have to worry about a space perspective. Now, from a barrier perspective, I wanted to try something a little bit new, and what you're seeing is, is it come together. And this was actually built uh, without really an idea in mind, and I was just more playing around with the colors. So for me, I wanted to utilize these stone panels and then place it with some darker, rich wood colors to get this really cool theme. And I think it really works for the type of animal that we're dealing with. Now, admittedly, the space that we've sectioned off for our skunk is a little bit on the larger side, but I still think it works and it's gonna create this really cool home and give us the space to really make something fun and amazing. And while I do appreciate building smaller habitats, sometimes it's nice to work with a medium-sized habitat. It just gives you more opportunity for you to make some amazing things. Now, speaking of creating these amazing things, I had this overarching idea for the interior of our habitat. I really wanted to have one hill with this big old tree on it that would be the central focus and we would build out from there. Now, the inspiration for this build actually comes from a rather old movie. It's called Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. It was actually released in 1992. And admittedly, I might have just dated myself there, uh, but I was a younger kid when I watched this movie. It was definitely not in 1992, though. I don't remember much of what happened there. But the idea of Fern Gully is that they have this Australian rainforest it's inhabited by a bunch of fairies and they've never seen humans and this rainforest is free of pollution. But over time, humans decided to come in, cut down the rainforest. They have their own goals for that. And they come across this big old tree that uh, was the prison for this evil spirit called Hexus. And that was the idea behind this really big gnarly tree in the center of the habitat. Now, the tree that Planet Zoo provides is really didn't fit the theme, so I actually used this branch, placed three of them around, and it kind of gave this idea of a really old tree that I really wanted. And it reminded me so much of Fern Gully that I, I felt that it just fit really well. Now, that all said, I think it's pretty amazing where you can find uh, inspiration for your Planet Zoo builds. Now, of course, it uh, doesn't really make sense to create something that's gonna be pretty empty and jarring. So uh, we do have quite a bit of foliage work ahead of ourselves. Now, we are utilizing that same method and I can't stress enough how much I enjoy building, utilizing this method. And I think it's gonna come to a head uh, as I build bigger and bigger areas. It just makes it a lot easier and it's a lot more fluid, which is really just stick to one piece at a time. Place your one piece, put it wherever you want, move on to the next one. But I am going to give a tip and you're seeing kind of the, the struggle in this portion of the speed build, which is if you're going to place down a lot of buffalo grass, uh, do so after the fact. Uh, and part of the reason why is a lot of the foliage you're going to want to place, you're going to want to place on uh, the surface of the ground. So you want to align to the surface because you're going to get that smooth look. But if you place a bunch of buffalo grass, it's never going to work correctly and you're going to struggle a lot. So I struggled a lot with it. Um, so pro tip. Uh, place your buffalo grass last because uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Now, one of the joys that I have with Planet Zoo is building something that I've thought about. You know, you have in your mind's eye this really cool, really amazing build and you'll go in, you'll try to build it. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. You're going to build something and you're going to realize that your vision has changed because you've lost sight of what you're trying to build. But let's be real. It does take a long time to build some pretty amazing things in Planet Zoo. But I'm actually here to tell you that that's OK, and that's part of the joy of building in Planet Zoo. Sometimes you're going to build things that you never thought you could have built, and it's going to create something wholly amazing. And I think this is an example, a perfect example of what I mean by that. 
Now, initially when I was building my habitat, I was pretty much done. I placed some flowers around just to get some extra pops of color in the habitat, break up a lot of the greens and the browns that you're seeing. And I was like, hey, I'm good with this. And then taking a step back, I was like, mm, you know, there's some other things I could build here. And initially I placed down this like weird ivy and it didn't work out because I was looking for this, which is the dry leaves from autumn. And I think this is a perfect example of losing sight of what your original vision is only to create something so much more amazing. And in this case, I changed it. So originally we had Fern Gully as the theme and that still is the theme and the inspiration for this entire build. But adding in these leaves added some additional color. It fit with the idea of creating a North American habitat for the skunk. And it was something that was truly amazing. And I don't think we would have ever built it if I'd come in and stuck to my plan. So sometimes you're going to have a plan and it's not going to work out. You're going to build something else and that's OK. You're going to make some amazing things. And all it takes sometimes is just a little bit of effort and a little bit of trial and error. So with our foliage finally completed, it's time for us to move on to our backstage area. And I always get a lot of joy out of building in backstage areas, more so because if you don't like what you built, that's OK. You're never really going to look at it very often or very in detail. So you can try new techniques, try new things. And I think this is a prime example. Now, admittedly, uh, I built a sunshade and the idea behind it, I feel, is keepers are going to be in the habitat very regularly. Skunks are the you know, type of animal that you could actually handle, uh, despite the fact that they might have a strong smell. So a lot of the stuff I'm putting in here is stuff that I would think would be in a skunk habitat. Now, I say think because none of my local zoos, uh, or in this case, zoos that are fairly close, have a skunk habitat because skunks are so prevalent. You actually see them all the time uh, out in your city streets and stuff like that, which is kind of sad because, of course, every animal deserves to live in their natural habitat. And I really think cities are not necessarily a natural habitat. So the first thing I added was this water barrel, which I think fits really nice. And I love the idea that it's actually covered. So in North America, it's really terrible if you have a lot of standing water. It's a breeding gown for a lot of mosquitoes. And with all of those diseases associated, it's not smart. So I love the attention to detail. And then, of course, worked in some eaves troughs. Now, I've never built with eaves troughs before. Uh, surprisingly easy. And I think it just goes to show that sometimes you need to get outside of your comfort zone, build something you've never built before, because sometimes you're going to be really amazed by what you provide. Now, on top of that, I did go in and add a wheelbarrow as well. And I appreciate the fact that you can color it and make it a little bit more unique to this particular build. And it works really well. So we have two major build pieces left. And the first one is going to be our education sign. Now, I'm not going to take full credit for building this. I actually got inspiration from a workshop item, but I am happy that I built it myself because it helps me to learn new techniques. And I'm going to say it again. If you see something on the workshop that looks really amazing, I encourage you to download it, rip it apart and see what they use to make it because you're going to learn new things. And I think that's the beauty of the community that is Planet Zoo. Now, I utilize some leaves and I love the way the leaves work as a grass. There's no grass sign, so it's very hard to build things. And this palm leaf really sealed the deal for me. I added it in on a whim and I think it goes to show sometimes happy mistakes work really well. Of course, I added in the pre-existing skunk sign. You have to have that iconic sign. And then I utilized our sign pack that we previously downloaded from the workshop. Now, what you see here is not what you're going to see in our final walk tour. And the reason why is because I got annoyed with something and I went back in and I was making some small minor details and uh, I decided to update and make this look a little bit better because right now it looks pretty haphazard. doesn't look that clean, but you're going to see a much cleaner version of it uh, in that full tour. Now, our last major build for this video, which is coming to an end, we really don't have that much more long left in it, uh, is our sunshade. And you've seen me build sunshades in the past uh, and they're a dime a dozen, but I wanted to try something new and I think I came across this really cool design utilizing the New World art pieces. These are things I never thought I would utilize in this manner and it, it really popped and I wanted to share this really cool idea. And it's opened up the eye, my eye to a whole slew of new ways to build sunshades in the future. So we are approaching the end of the speed build, but don't worry, we do have a live tour coming up right shortly. Uh, so sit back, relax and enjoy our new skunk habitat. And with our final sunshade place, it is time for us to do a full tour of our new skunk habitat. Now, before we get there, just really quickly, uh, I haven't forgotten, I have created a new name for or a name plate for our Wolf Firewatch habitat. Uh, I'm not going to share it here, though. I think I'm going to share it during part of our full tour of our uh, North American revamped zoo. So uh, stay tuned and you'll see that come a few episodes down the road, hopefully. 
Now for the bison habitat, we've gotten quite a few names and I'm still working my way through it, uh, but rest assured we will have a new name and a new nameplate uh, ready to go by our next episode. Now, we're not here to talk about old habitats, we're here to talk about new habitats. And the first thing to take a look at is just the foliage that we've kind of placed down. Uh, and I love the use of like these boards to kind of create like a little curve that would uh, stop people from kind of like wandering through all the uh, the foliage. It's very man-made, that makes total sense. And I love the way it looks. It's super green and dense. And, and I just think, you know, like if you were to go to a zoo, this is what I would want to see to kind of bridge that man-made aspect with something that's a little bit more steeped in in nature. So really happy with this and it kind of circles around it. It's also hiding our uh, pretty ugly looking food court. So we'll have to deal with that on another episode. Now, first things first, our education sign, uh, you can tell it has changed specifically our uh, little uh, custom sign in the center. Uh, it, it's pretty generic for now. And I think I, uh, I really do want to take a crack at creating a better uh, version of this. I am not very uh, comfortable with making these. I think I've tried it once or twice and it kind of failed, but I've learned a lot just by looking at this sign pack. So uh, I'm really excited to maybe uh, take a crack at making my own. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll do like kind of like a like a little live stream or something for that. Let me know if that's something you guys would want to see. Uh, of course, we also have no name for our skunk habitat. There is a name suspiciously, uh, suspiciously missing from this uh, this education board. So if you have a, a recommendation for a name, because remember, this was not a skunk habitat originally, it was an armadillo habitat. Uh, so we do need to rename this and to see something a little, uh, a little nicer than just saying it's a skunk habitat. Now, speaking of skunks, we have uh, a site on our uh, one of our skunks uh, just meandering around. Uh, we have two. We have Molly and Winston, and I love their names, Molly and Winston. I uh, did pick them myself. Oh, there's the other one right there. Just taking a little uh, wander around. Uh, and uh, I think it's uh, names are super fitting. I love the idea of Molly and Winston. Uh, of course, we have our Fern Gully inspired tree right in the center. Uh, really cool considering it's made with uh, just three pieces that are the exact same and just rotated, which I goes, uh, goes to show perception is everything. Like when you look at it from here, you would never think that this was the exact same piece just copied three times. So pretty interesting. And, and I love the way that you can uh, work with your pieces in such a really cool and unique way. Of course, we have a few uh, really cool additions to the habitat. We have like these little African branches. Uh, they're not part of the nature uh, tab. They're actually part of the build tab, which is really weird and uh, kind of alarming that something that's so useful is not where you would normally find it. But I love the use of these trees. And on top of that, it doesn't affect the uh, the happiness of your animals because uh, it's not a piece of foliage. So they're not going to be like, oh, this piece doesn't belong in my habitat. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, speaking of habitat and pieces, we have our custom uh, guest barrier, and I love the way this looks. We have like the lower section for children and uh, kids to kind of look through. Uh, it's easier for them to see. And then we have the higher section that allows adults to kind of like peer over and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. And uh, I love the way it looks. We have all of our enrichment items at the front of the habitat. And the reason why is it just drags all the uh, skunks to the front. It is a rather large habitat. We have that hill right in the center. So it does block a lot of line uh, sites. So we want to make sure uh, that our guests are seeing the skunks in their natural habitat or as close to natural as possible in this case. Now in the background, you can kind of see something sticking out, which is our uh, our uh, backstage area. Now I'm not gonna go too in depth with the backstage area, but I do wanna say I love the roof. Uh, it's a slate roof and uh, you would never pick this roof because in the build menu, it's like white and blue. And you're like, I would never use a white or blue roof at all, but it's colorable. And I think that it's such a shame that something that's as beautiful as this roof is uh, colored white and blue. Maybe they did it on purpose to be like, hey, like you can change the color of this. I definitely didn't catch on to that very quickly. <laughs> And funny story, so I uh, I built the uh, the kind of the gazebo area in the back and then I uh, accidentally deleted a piece that was tied to it and I deleted the entire build and I didn't realize it when I was working on like the actual building itself. And by the time I went to go look at it and I noticed it was gone, I couldn't like undo everything. So I ended up having to rebuild it. But that being said, I love the new version of this. It looks so much nicer. It's a little higher, it's a little wider, it's a little uh, bigger. And I think it just fits so much more uh, into the actual build build overall. So uh, happy accidents do happen even in Planet Zoo. Now that's it from a tour. There's not much to share about this. It's, it's a very generic, a very medium sized habitat. 
Uh, I think in hindsight, this habitat's a little too large uh, for skunks. You can see how small they are and then how large the area is. Uh, and I think that's part of the learning experience and the joy is building something and realizing, holy moly, this is a little big on the large side. But it's, uh, it's the joy of also building a planet zoo. Now we have quite a few open areas. If we kind of just uh, dart around this uh, little uh, foliage island, you can see there's a huge open area, which is uh, perfect for a new habitat. Um, so I'm always open for suggestions on what North American animal you guys would love to see added into this area. May not do it right away. We of course still have to work through our bear habitat, uh, but I think it'd be a really cool uh, thing to add in here. And it kind of helps to uh, fill up the space a little bit. Now that's the end of our tour and I just want to say thank you so much for all of the feedback, the support. Uh, I do read all of your comments and uh, I definitely try to take your feedback and make it work for me. Now, uh, a few call outs before we call it a, a day on this one. Uh, we, of course, have our Discord. I think I've mentioned it quite a few times. You're always welcome to join uh, both new and experienced Planet Zoo players, people who've never played Planet Zoo. If you're interested a bit more about the game, you can join. Uh, it's just a really fun uh, overall experience. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we really uh, open to uh, to uh, having you join our community. Of course, there's also uh, uh, challenges to earn uh, free DLC. Uh, so keep that in mind as well if you're interested in, you know, maybe stretching your skills a little bit and possibly winning some DLC. It's always a, a fun experience for that. Otherwise, I just wanna say, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Uh, as always, I want you guys to know there's no pressure to do so on any of those. It does help the channel, but I also just wanna have a fun community. So uh, if you don't wanna do any of that, that's totally cool as well. There is no pressure when it comes to that. Lastly, and of course, I just wanna say, ciao for now, everybody.